Okay, uh, this uh, is called a second derivative test on concavity, so this is part one. All right, so uh, concavity, you guys, is just your direction of your curvature. So does it uh, curve up or curve down? So, uh, so here's types of concavity. This is concave up right here. Here's a function that's increasing that's concave up. Here's a function that's decreasing, but it's also concave up, okay? Here's a function that's uh, decreasing concave down, and here's a function that's increasing that's concave down. And how I think of this, you guys, is, is you think of like an umbrella, you guys. Like th these guys would be your umbrella. Uh, it would drain water right there, and if you turned it upside down, your umbrella would hold water in it, okay? So it's just if it cups up, it's concave up. If it cups down, it's concave down. All right. Uh, so uh, definition, a, a change from concave up to concave down uh, or from concave down to concave up occurs at a, a point of inflection. I call it a PI. Most books call it a PI. Okay, so for example right here, uh, this function, whoops, uh, let's see, there's my, whoops, this function right here is uh, concave down. Sorry about my scribbliness right there. It's, I was doing that with my my finger um, drawer right there anyways and then so where it changes to concave up right there uh, there's an inf inflection point right there okay so a point of inflection okay and then here it goes from concave up and then it changes from concave down so at that point where it changes is called a, a point of inflection an inflection point okay so your second derivative test is this if uh, your second derivative is greater than zero uh, then at that spot it's concave up if your second derivative is less than this zero at that spot, then it's concave down. Okay, so this would be like f double prime of x. So you plug in actual numeric values. If it equals zero, uh, it could be a, a pi, it could be a, an inflection point, but it might not be because right here um, it, it, it equals zero right there in that whole spot right there. I, I don't know what's going on right there. It's just constant right there. Okay, so it's a. Uh, um, we're not sure. So procedures for finding concavity and inflection points, you find uh, f prime and then find uh, the second derivative, f double prime. And then you solve uh, f double prime, your numerator and denominator, you set those equal to zero. Just like uh, uh, your first derivative test, the second derivative test, you get your criticals by setting equal the top and bottom equal to zero. Then make a number line and chart for the criticals. Okay, and then test uh, sections uh, on that number line for, for your second derivative equation. Okay, so here's an example right here. Find the intervals on which the function is concave up, concave down, and any uh, inflection points. Okay, here's a nice easy one. So let's first find the derivative. The first derivative is uh, 4x cubed minus 12x, and then the second derivative is 12x squared minus 24x. All right, now I set this equal to zero. I'm going to go ahead and factor it. I can pull a GCF of a 12x out. So my criticals are x equals 0 and x equals 2 right there. So now I'm going to make a number line. And, and this should say f double prime right there. Let's see if I have some. Yeah, we're going to call this f double prime. This is f double prime right there. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing this on my second derivative. And I'm going to test uh, my second derivative only. Let me go ahead and sorry for the distractions, you guys. All right, so, um, uh, so I'm going to test that on on my f double prime and I'm testing like you know if I tested say negative uh, 10 then this would be a negative I just want to know is it positive or negative you know this would be a negative 120 I just want to know if it's positive or negative this is negative this is negative so negative times a negative is a positive if I tried one right here this would be positive this would be negative so this would be negative a positive times a negative and this would be positive right there okay so this interval is going to be concave up concave down for this one and then concave up right here okay so you'd write it like this it's concave uh, it's concave uh, up on on negative infinity to zero and uh, on uh, two to uh, positive infinity okay and then so there's going to be inflection points at these guys right here okay and they're open intervals you guys so they're the rounded kind of parentheses okay and then so so I know I have an inflection point at x equals 0 and x equals 2. And to get the y-coordinates of these, you guys, and I plug these x equals 0 back up into the original function f. So plug in 0 and you get 0, 0. And then plug in uh, 2 right here, I get uh, 2 to the 4th is 16. Uh, and then 2 cubed is 8. 4 times 8 is 32. So 16 minus uh, 32 is um, uh, negative 16. Okay. 
All right, let's try a little more complicated one right here. Okay, we're going to have to do quotient rule on this one. Okay, notice, you guys, you're going to get some asymptotes at x equals plus or minus 2 because those will get me 0 in the, in the original. So there's going to be asymptotes at x equals plus or minus 2. Remember, there's quotient rule right there. So I'm going to go uh, top one, the derivative of the top one times the bottom, uh, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay, that's what this stuff says. That's what this is over here. Okay, should be familiar to you guys. All right, and then clean it all up, and I get uh, negative 10x uh, over x squared minus 4. Okay, now that's the first derivative, so I've got to do that again. So I'm going to do a little u substitution when I take this derivative right here. So it goes uh, f prime g uh, plus f g prime. Now I haven't done this yet. That's this purple stuff over here. I did a u substitution right there, and I get this red guy right there. So I plop that dude in there right there. Okay, now what I originally did on this, you guys, is I distributed this guy through. I squared that and distributed negative 10 through. And then I multiplied. This is, this is 40x squared. I distributed that through. And I wound up into a big old mess, you guys. Look, check this out. Here's an x squared minus 4. Here's an x squared minus 4. Here's an x squared minus 4. I can take out 1 here, 1 here, 1 here. And I'm left with, you guys with me? Uh, I'm left with... Um, uh, now I can go ahead and, and I have uh, negative 10x squared uh, plus 40. You see that? And then over here I have a plus 40x squared, so that's what I get right there. I factored out uh, one quantity, x squared minus 4. Okay, so there's my second derivative right there. So now i got to get the criticals. I set the bottom and the top equal to 0. And there's no uh, points of inflections. Uh, at x equals plus or minus 2 because those are asymptotes, you guys. So, so it's, it's either going to be concave up or concave down at those guys right there. So, uh, so here it is right there, 30x squared plus 40. That's never going to equal 0. Okay, but this is going to equal 0 at plus or minus 2. All right, so those are my criticals right there. I just Now I'm going to test those in, in uh, my second derivative, f double prime. And, uh, okay, when I plug that, so I'll plug in like negative, uh, you know, 10. Negative 10 right here. This is going to be a positive on top. I'm going to get a positive on bottom. This is going to be positive. So that means it's going to be concave uh, up. This is going to be negative. This is going to be, con uh, uh, sorry, positive here. So concave up, concave down, concave up. Okay, there's no PIs because of the inflection points right there. All right, and that's it, you guys. So if you're in my calculus class, I would assign that to be your homework.